Good morning YouTube. So this is my Garmin Edge 800 bike GPS or bike computer. I think I purchased this in 2010 and it's still working just fine. Original battery. So one thing I wanted to do was go through the various display screens that I have on here. I guess they call these timer pages. So one, one reason for doing this video is I want to document what I have here because about the only problem I've had with this unit is every once in a while it changes one of these parameters or variables that are displayed. So it's important that you document what you have because they might change. This is the main screen you come to when you first turn the unit on. And so anyway, what I have on this main screen, I've got 10 data fields, which is the most you can have on a single screen. So here I've got the distance that I've ridden. I've got my current speed. I've got the elapsed time since I started riding, time of day. I've got a calorie counter here. I've got my heading. Here's the GPS accuracy my current elevation, the pedaling cadence, and my heart rate zone, which is a number like zero through five. And then this, this is my second screen. So it's very similar to the first one. I have my speed. I've got an odometer reading there. I've got the distance ridden. And this field should be temperature. But somehow it changed to distance to destination, which only works if you're navigating someplace. And then again, I have the time. I have my vertical ascent rate where I have feet per hour. You can also select meters per hour, different values, but that gives you a kind of an idea how fast you're going uphill or gaining elevation. I can keep track of the grade. This will show 5%, 10%, 12%. I've got the elevation displayed. This is what I do for climbing. I've got those three numbers. And then I've got my cadence and heart rate zone, just like the other screen. Now this is my third screen. I'll use this one a lot of times on the road when I'm climbing. I've got the vertical ascent, the grade, the distance ridden up the grade, and then my heart rate. So like I say, I'll use this one on uh, road climbs. And then this one I use a lot on descents, especially in, in the open space preserves and the, the various county parks that I go riding in because they have a speed limit, 15 mile per hour, and they have rangers with radar guns that will write you a $400 ticket if they catch you going over the speed limit. So I do this screen, it's got one, two, three, four data fields. The speed is really big right there. I also put my heart rate on there, uh, the elevation and the grade. And this is mainly my downhill screen. So riding off road, going downhill. And then this is kind of a similar one. For here, I'm just trying out different combinations of data fields. You can have quite a few of these screens. So this one has speed, elevation, and distance. Just real basic. And one of the reasons for having the larger display here is one, so you can see it easier compared to like one of these screens. Like if you go back here, your speed is, is a tiny little number like that. Where if you go over here, the speed is really big. And if you're riding down a hill and your handlebars are shaking and the GPS is shaking, you need to be able to see that number so that you can slow down and avoid a ticket. And then this, this is kind of one of their summary screens. It gives you the speed and the distance, and then this gives you your average speed over the last so many segments. I think it's every five miles is the default. Then here is my map display. So I've got the open source topo maps loaded in here. So if you're riding along for instance, looking for a particular location, like geocaches will show up on this map as a waypoint. So if you're riding along the trail, you can zoom in or out and see where you're going. So I have the mapping display and then, oh, this shows your elevation profiles. So this one, you can look back and it'll show you kind of a elevation cross section. You went up, you went down, 
and then back to the main screen. So like I said, I've had problems with some of these data fields changing. One problem, I tracked down a cause. So sometimes I would use this GPS walking or hiking. So I would start the timer and I would put this in my pocket. And apparently there'd be enough random clicks on the touch screen to go in and change a parameter. And I'll show you how complicated that is. It's pretty hard but it'll go in and change one of these numbers. So that's why it's important to document what you have here because it can change. So to fix the random touch screen issue, if you have this in your pocket, go over here and just do a short click on the power button. If you do a short click, it'll give you your current bike profile that you have loaded. So I have profiles for my different bicycles. That way it keeps track of mileage for each bike and it pairs up with the cadence and speed sensor on each bike but to prevent the random touch screen things you can go in here and lock the screen and now nothing works so you can click you know nothing nothing can get changed until you go back here and unlock so that seems to prevent the random clicking in your pocket syndrome but the other problem I had once just recently and that caused this thing to change was I was running the GPS. I got the low battery warning. I plugged in my power bank to charge the unit up and I didn't notice until later this temperature variable here changed to distance to go. So I need to change this back today before I go out on a ride. So this is how you change it. You have to go to menu and you go to settings and you go to bike settings, training pages, and then you go timer pages and then user defined. This is where you set up your pages. So I've got page one with 10 items, page two with 10, three, four, and five have four and three items and my problem is on page two and this is where you select how many items so I want 10 and then I believe you click there and select a field and you have to go down let's see general yeah temperature that's what I want so there we go now I've got temperature in there like I said this is my climbing screen the temperature is up there, I like to back off, not push my heart rate quite as high and not work as hard. If it's cooler, I can push a little bit harder because I don't have to worry about overheating. So right there, I've changed it. I go X and then you back out of that and back out, back out. You can see how many clicks it took to change one of those displays. And that can happen randomly in your pocket if you don't lock the screen using the power button there. So now I've got my temperature fixed and I'm ready to go out on a ride. That's how you can set up all these screens. You really want to give some thought to what you have displayed there. You're going to be looking at this data quite a bit when you're riding and you should have some fairly useful data shown. You've got multiple screens so you might as well take advantage of those. And like I say, I use this one a lot on the road. I use this one a lot for climbing out in the mountains on the dirt tracks and fire roads. That's my main climbing screen on the road. And then I'll use either this one or this one for descending when I'm worried about rangers with radar guns. And the only thing I wish Garmin would do is let me program a beep that if I go over 15 miles an hour, beep and let me know so that I can slow down. I've, I've requested that of Garmin, but I guess where they're located out in the Midwest, they don't have to worry about that. But out here, $400 ticket if you're going over the speed limit, 15 miles an hour, and you could easily pay for one of these with a $400 ticket. So having that screen, I flip this screen on whenever I go downhill. I have it as big as possible so I can see the mile per hour and ride the brakes. Those rangers, they hide in 
just like on the road, they've got speed traps. I know where most of them are, but anyway, hopefully that's a help. If anybody has any other questions on how I use this GPS, post up in the comment section below, and I'll, I'll put some other videos over here on the left side. And as always, thanks for watching.